So I've been here at Cherokee Hills Baptist Church in the Oklahoma City area for about five or six months now. One of the common questions I get over and over here in the comments of YouTube and on social media and through emails is, when are we going to get a tour? Well, how about today? That's our media booth. Let's go check it out. Hi, I'm Dave Dolphin at practicalworshiplog.com, sharing ideas, tips, and practical advice for the everyday worship leader. On this channel, we have weekly videos that help you lead a worship band and be a leader of people. So if you haven't already, consider subscribing so you don't miss the next one. Let's go back here into the media booth. This is what our booth is looks like we generally have three positions back here. So there's someone running per presenter and lyrics. You have someone running audio with front of house and then over there and that fire chair is going to be the producer, but they also run the lights. So here is our pro presenter station. Nothing too out of the ordinary here. One thing you'll notice is that uh, we're actually running uh, SD. It's still a four to three aspect ratio, which other, does, it doesn't bother me. Uh, our media director says that's easy for me to say because I'm not the one designing material for uh, four by three and for 16 by nine. But, uh, you know, for the main purpose of these screens being, you know, to display lyrics during the songs um, or maybe a Bible verse during the message, uh, they get the job done and, and they do find this building, this auditorium was built about uh, 2000. And so this video system is the original video system. At some point we do plan to upgrade it, but there's a couple things like microphones, thanks to the government that have to happen first. So um, our projectors, we have one right over there, again, original to the, uh, the, this, the building of this auditorium. And then there's one right above me for the other one. Um, and that is the two projectors that go to the main screens, all operated here from uh, ProPresenter. We got the batteries that we use for all of our wireless microphones uh, that are rechargeable. Then we come over here to front of house. We are very fortunate that we are running a CL5 um, and everything is running uh, through Dante. We got a couple of Rio boxers. There's one Rio box down there for inputs and outputs. There is a few on the stage as well. And um, the, a few, uh, a previous worship pastor did an amazing job really researching all of the needs and and putting together this system and then not only doing the research but uh, selling the vision to the congregation as to why we needed the things that he had on the list uh, because it's really easy for someone who is not a you know pro engineer to say well why do we need this versus something this is cheaper why do we need this and so he did an amazing job really selling that vision and we are benefiting from that so uh, we run our CL5 uh, kind of our basic uh, setup you know we have uh, this custom mix here that it allows us to grab a couple of quick things um, our all of our reverbs live right there at the DCA level you got main uh, for for drums bass guitars keys uh, all, everything the sequences is coming off of Ableton you know right here would be the iPad actually for uh, running uh, pre and post music and also being able to run pads during like acoustic sets um, or if there's like a response moment or during a prayer time, if we need to put some atmosphere in and we're not actually running tracks through Ableton, we have the ability to, uh, to be able to do that. Then this is the iMac, so this is gonna be the, the source audio from ProPresenter, all the vocals coming in there. And then these are all of our vocal channels, our handhelds for our singers. And then um, we also have a couple of lives for uh, those that are speaking, baptism, all that kind of stuff. Um, so real quick about this, we were in the process of kind of finalizing and standardizing um, the way that we have our board set up. And so in that process, we've been doing some research as to like what other people are doing. So I uh, recently took a field trip to a local Life Church campus that's right down the street from us. One of the things they do with their CL5 is instead of having like right now, ours is our mains and our sub. Um, what you really don't need, if you set up your DCAs well and all everything else is set up well, you shouldn't need to touch those. So you know what they do? They do um, main speaker and announcements. And that's what they put there, which we thought was genius. So in our process, as we uh, finalize that, we're gonna change that where these are customized to um, the, the main person who's given the message, who's speaking, who's preaching, and then the person who does like announcements and you know that handheld that lives at the front of the stage, you know, kind of your oops mic. So that's there. So over here, um, iPad, like I said, is for pads and for pre and post music. We run Ableton for all of our tracks. It happens here um, at front of house. 
and it all goes Dante into the network to be able to get to to the CL5 and to our ears and and things like that. All that stuff. We designed it where everything on the right hand side is going to be source material. Everything on the left hand side is like outputs. So. Over here, we have all of our wireless microphones, which hopefully in the very, very near future will disappear. These are all in the 600 band, and so they will be illegal to operate in the next year. So uh, provided that we get a budget finalized for 2019, we have some money in there to allocate to get these uh, microphones updated here. Now, we have about, looks like 10 channels of audio. We're gonna probably reduce that down to about six or eight. Uh, because we just looking at our daily needs, our weekly needs. We only need a few for the front singers, for an acoustic, a couple for you know speaking and announcements and stuff like that. And so we're going to reduce that. If we need more for like a, uh, a drama or things like that or additional singers, we're just going to rent rent the material. And so uh, we are going to reduce that. But for now, these are the particular boxes that we are running for our wireless microphones. Down here, we have some storage. So these are all of our over-the-ear microphones, countryman mics, things like that. They live in here. Down in here, we have all of our packs. This is for wireless in-ears. They live in here. We also have all the packs for uh, for like speakers and lobs and those kinds of microphones. We got supplies in here. You can never have too much gaff tape. So that lives in here. We have a couple more supplies, random things in here, including a thumb drive for uh, firmware updates for the CL5. And the second one uh, looks like we have some cleaning supplies. And down in here, we have all of the wireless microphones that we use. Those live right there. And then also the uh, headsets that we use for our media team so they can talk to each other during the service. Let's see, on the other side, uh, front of house, talkback mic. And then we have another Mac Mini that is part of front of house. This right here is running uh, tracks live. This is how we multi-track record uh, the services so that uh, we have those if you want to remix songs or things like that, or as a spare for uh, when we're recording the message, uh, things like that. And then also the, the ability to do virtual sound check if the guy running sound wants to fine tune some things, you're not tying up the band to do that. So that's what this computer is for. It also is running the Dante controller. So we can look at the current status of the network, but we can also go over here to routing. And if we need to do some routing really quick, um, that happens at this level as well. This is the camera that we are using to record our messages on. Uh, it's not fancy. We're just doing a static wide shot um, just to get some kind of a capture for the message. It's got an audio input from the board, from the CL5. Uh, my understanding, I've been told that this isn't a super fancy camera, but uh, for what we need it to do, it does just fine. This last little section, uh, like I mentioned before, this desk right here is really for the producer, but it also is where the lights live. And uh, so the producer is thinking of the service at like a 30,000 foot view, um, but because of the location of all this equipment, um, it's also been lights. Now, part of that reason is that this is the original lighting controller for the building, uh, circa 2000. And we didn't have this station here but a, until a couple of months ago. And one of the main problems besides the fact that it's, well, I mean, I don't need to say anything, um, but these little faders are analog. And so, you know, you'd have different scenes set up for like worship and preaching or whatever. Well, when you brought it back down, because they're analog, they wouldn't necessarily reset uh, to zero. They'd be like stuck at like two or three percent. And so the lights would be on, just dim just a little bit when you left the room. Uh, we had some premature bulbs that were burning out. It's just a bad deal. And so um, we do still use it. It's still in the mix because if I press this button right here, it actually will turn on our house lights. There they are. And uh, we have control panels at all of the doors. So if you need to enter the room and be able to come in here and clean or get something or do some work, you don't have to go to the lighting controller to, to do that. Uh, but that's the only thing that we use that for uh, is to be able to turn the house lights on and off. By the way, a schematic of all the lighting it needs to be updated um, actually in the CAD drawing, but we have all the writings in of where lights live and things like that. So this is new and we're running American DJ, uh, the My DMX. This is an interim system. We put this in, it's a temporary setup because this is, this is where we started. 
and we actually would like to install Jan's Vista as a permanent solution, um, but we would need to purchase that. I think it's actually, was it Chroma Q now that owns it, so it's not Jan's anymore, but we'd like to get that software and then a small little surface that's about the size of this Mac Mini that has you know just a few faders on it. It doesn't need to be like a full surface, but the ability to have a fader or two at your disposal to uh, as you're programming, but also to it would, it would be nice to be able to uh, change things on a fly. That's one of the problems that we're having with, Amer with the American DJ software is that if you want to change one of these scenes on the fly, it's tough. I mean, and by tough, I mean like it's not gonna happen. Um, for example, let's say you're doing the message, but, you, but now you wanna have a moment where uh, you bring people to the floor where they can pray and at the altar. Um, unless you have a, a scene in here that's already set up to go, um, that is, it's just not an option. And so uh, Jan's Vista does a better job of being able to do some things on the fly. And it's, it allows you to build with presets and also it's just really easy. It's a lot easier for volunteers to get on board with. And so this is something that we set up in the interim because we had it. We had the software, we already had the Mac mini, we already had this device, uh, which is how we're getting information from the computer to DMX. And so for $0, we got a pretty significant upgrade to our lighting system. But the final, the final plan is to put Vista in, and then not only that, but to also for, because right now all of these cues are being punched uh, uh, manually by the person running uh, that is the producer. What we'd like to do is have Ableton over here send MIDI information down the network to here. And so when we're doing worship, all those cues are automated. It's one less thing for the producer to have to mess with. So they would still have to uh, change a couple of things that are that can't be automated through Ableton because Ableton isn't running during that part of the service, but it should be able to, to clean this up just a little bit. So that's kind of where we're headed uh, in the year 2019. Down here, uh, we have we do have a rack uh, of some gear. We have a CD player because it's 2019 and you still need a CD player. Um, we also have, this is our video switcher for video inputs right here. Um, uh, that power conditioner, this right here is for lighting. And so we have one DMX um, output from that system and we live in one universe because our system's really simple. Uh, but we have to send that information to various places from the stage and house lights and things like that. So that's how we split that out. And then finally down here, we do have one of the three real boxes that we have for uh, audio inputs and outputs. And even though we have stage boxes on the stage that are giving us all of our inputs um, for, for all of our source material, we're sending information back to the amps and to the hallway speakers and things like that using the old traditional snake. So that happens back here. This is also the inputs that are happening for wireless microphones and things like that. So. The final thing I want to show you is actually out here. So we used to have three separate locations, three separate rooms for our stuff, for all the, the extra cabling and gear and just storage and things like that. Uh, the problem was is that some of those rooms were here in the auditorium. Some of them were like in extra hallways. You know, you'd have to walk down the way to be able to get a cable if you needed that. And then some of those spaces um, not only had our stuff, but it had other things that were part of other ministries and other part of the church. It was just, it was a big, huge mess. And so there was an opportunity where the church said, hey, we want to extend out the prayer room and we need to take over one of your spaces. You're going to lose one of your spaces. And it's, it's hard to compete with a prayer room. Like when, if, if that's what the church wants to do, it's kind of hard to say, no, we need our room. And so we are actually consolidating down to just one main space. So we cleaned out a lot of things. We pulled some things out. We decided that we didn't need a lot of things. We were able to bless six or seven different other ministries with some of the things that we had that we weren't using anymore. And so the process, this is like weeks and weeks and weeks of just going through all of our things, rethinking through it, reorganizing it. Um, and it's everything that we have now is behind this door and our media team, the guy that runs that and that whole team, they crushed it. Like I, behind this door, I can't wait to show you. So if we go in here, this is our brand new media Ha ha closet, holy cow. The amount of space that we have in here to be able to have this is incredible. And so down in here, we've got a couple of cords and some microphones live down here and mic clips and things like that. Um, I think that is a drawing of one of our Sunday school teachers.
believe it or not. So uh, paying tribute to him here in the media closet for some reason. Uh, we have all of our extra lighting up on a bar over here. Down here we have some more microphones and some amps. Uh, on this over here we have all the pieces for, um, for mic stands, extra booms and basses and some stands. Uh, some of the large percussion lives in here. Some of the Easter things, uh, all that stuff lives in here. We have a couple of those uh, powered QSC uh, speakers. So those live down in here. More Easter stuff lives in this area. Some stools and music stands and some uh, choir boom mics that live over there. Extra lighting, some extra pieces, spare parts, some of the bulbs that we have paint and cleaning supplies. That right there is a portable PA system that you can roll out. And then over here, a couple other cabling systems for like RCA cables and what you use to connect an iPod to a sound system, stuff like that. MIDI controller, some drum hardware lives over here. We have some more uh, items over here. Believe it or not, we actually use some of this uh, old analog processing over here, including got a video where we actually use this little sucker, this little 3630 to be a ducker for a PA that we were running for uh, trunk or tree. I'm gonna link that up in the uh, top right corner right about now. So uh, a few other things live here, some road cases, some uh, speaker stands, cleaning supplies. This right here is all of our cabling that we have mic cabling and whatnot, and they're all color coded, uh, not only on the, on the hook, but also on the cable itself. So you know what kind of cable it is and the length of that cable. And then finally we have our workbench so that you can uh, get some quick access to tools and fix some things. Um, you got power right there on the wall so you can do the things that you need to do on the fly because it always breaks five minutes before the service. So that is our media closet. This is so, nice to have we're very thankful on the back wall of our media closet we are measuring ourselves apparently like we're in fifth grade again and uh, this is how i found out that our media director cameron is actually taller than i am and he even accused me of cheating and saying that i measured at the spikes in my hair that's okay at least i know that it's not 2018 anymore